good day my dear uh, children happy to meet you all again through this online class uh, let us uh, start with a word of prayer our heavenly father thank you so much for this wonderful day lord help us to learn the summary of this travel law help us to be adventurous to fulfill the duties in our day to day lives lord in jesus name we pray amen okay children so this is about a, a travel log what i told you already in the last class travel log is a a blended word it's a combination of a travel plus travel plus monologue okay travel once travel monologue is a person who talks about himself or he gives a report isn't it so travel a log so mono is left here so these two words are blended that is why it is called as uh, mono log a blended term okay who is giving this uh, travel log uh, idea a report our uh, writer author himself edmund uh, hilary is giving the report and who went with him six people were there and uh, uh, who reached finally and uh, tenzing norge and edmund hilary reached the top of the mount everest so the summit is the peak of the mount everest any peak it is called the summit so he is giving a report how they reached the summit of mount everest do you know children mount everest is 8848 meter height okay in height it is this much tall okay so how they uh, continued they travel we saw and beginning uh, how many people were there six men at the camp eight they started and uh, who were there Uh, Edmund Hillary, Tenzing Norgay, George Lowy, and uh, Alfred uh, Gregory, and two other Sherpas. Do you know who is that Sherpas? I told you already. Local people of Nepal, Nepalese who guide the uh, mountaineers and the travelers who come there. Where are they? They continue their journey after uh, taking. Uh, Uh, lime juice with sugar and what's going on everyone oh, so jump please and say i'm going to be going what happened here yes. oh my god tensing hilary talked about uh, his own uh, thing i think no it's not about hilary yeah now uh, how they continued their journey is given as a uh, lesson so half is over we'll continue We cut a seat for ourselves just below the south summit and removed our oxygen apparatus. As our first partly full bottle of oxygen was now exhausted, we had only one full bottle left. So they brought one, isn't it? So it is about um point four five four kilograms of oxygen, isn't it? So half, maybe one third over. so he felt that he was relieved from uh, carrying the weight and uh, i cut steps down off the south summit and i felt a sense of freedom and well being as my eyes cap bit into the first steep slope of the ridge my high hopes were realized the snow was crystalline and firm two or three blows of the ice axe produced a step large enough even for our oversized high altitude boots and firm thrust of the ice axe would sink it halfway up the shaft giving a solid and comfortably belay so they wanted to continue but uh, when they go to the higher altitudes ice was very hard and they had to uh, use their belay like this so then only they can go see here it is a steep uh, valley like and it is a belay so they will have 
a name and it will be anchored and it is like a ladder using that from this valley to this valley they move on okay so we moved one at a time i would cut a 40 foot line of steps tensing belaying me while i worked then in turn i would sink my shaft and put a few loops of the rope around it and tensing protected against the breaking step would move up to me then once again as he belayed me uh, i would go on cutting see uh, if one uh, does this work and uh, the other one would help okay when uh, the same thing happens to the other place so each other they helped in a number of places the overhanging ice cornices ice uh, uh, blocks were there very large indeed and in order to escape them i cut a line of steps down to where the snow met the rocks of the on the west it was a great thrill to look straight down this enormous rock face to see 8000 feet below us the tiny tents of camp 4 in the western cwm it is a place where you can see here i can show you cwm means it is an uh, enclosed armchair like uh, shaped hollow situated at the head of a valley so it might be like this there, there will be a very hollow in between two peaks and uh, scrambling on the rocks and the cutting hand holes on the snow we were able to shuffle past these difficult portions on its east side was another great cornice ice and running up the full 40 feet of the step was a narrow crack between the corners and the rock leaving tensing to belay me as best he could i jammed my way into this crack then kicking backwards i sank the spikes of my uh, crampons deep into the frozen snow behind me and levered myself off the ground so uh, we were able to climb up at least uh, 8000 was not our problem at all but uh, remaining is our problem so it was very risky for them to continue taking advantage of every little rock hold and all the force of knee shoulder the arms i could muster i could recoup regain i literally crampened backwards up the crack praying that the corners would remain attached to the rock my progress although slow was steady as tensing paint out the rope i inched my way upwards until i could reach over the top of the rock and drag myself out of the crack onto a wide ledge for a few moments i lay regaining my breath and for the first time really felt the fierce determination that nothing now could stop us reaching the top i took a firm stance on the ledge and signaled to tensing to come on up as i have i heaved hard on the rope tensing wriggled his way up the crack and finally collapsed at the top like a giant fish when it has just been hauled from the sea after a terrible struggle the ridge continued as before giant cornices on the right steep rock sloped on the left the ridge curved away to the right and we have no idea where top was as i cut around the back of one hump another higher one would swing into view time was passing and the ridge seemed never ending see children like it, it is like a heap they were able to we know that it is mountainous region isn't it so they will um, cut the corners using their axe and they walked and again a valley will be there like that they went on now at least they were there but they don't know which is their uh, top might be this can they can say but it will be the top 
So adventure is not yet over, isn't it? So they struggled a lot to find out first what is the top. Time was passing and the rich seemed never ending. So this ridge, they, they, it was kept on moving and they could not find out which is their peak at all, which is their uh, summit at all. So our original zest had now quite gone and it was turning more into a grim struggle. I then realized that the ridge ahead, instead of rising, now dropped sharply away. I looked upwards to see a narrow snow ridge running up to a snowy submit. A few more whacks of the ice axe in the eye in the firm snow and we stood on top. My first feelings were of relief, relief that there were no more steps to cut and no more ridges to traverse and no more humps to tantalize as with hopes of success. I looked at Tenzing in spite of uh, balaclava, a helmet, goggles uh, and oxygen mask all encrusted with the long eyes that concealed his face. There was no distinguishing his grin of delight as he looked all around him. We shook hands and then Tenzing threw his arm around my shoulders and we thumped each other on the back until we were almost breathless. It was 11.30 a.m. The ridge had taken us two and uh, two hours, two hours, but it seemed like a lifetime. So it, it was very easy for them, almost okay. But the top, reaching top, few feet, they could not travel, they could not continue at all. All. So it was like uh, a lifetime for them to move on. So to the east was a giant neighbor, Makalu, unexplored and unclimbed. It is another uh, peak. Far away across the clouds, the great bulk of Kanjanjanka loomed on the horizon. So equally, uh, Kanjanjanka mountain peak was there. And to the west, we could see the great unexplored ranges of Nepal stretching off into the distance. The most important photograph I felt was shot down the North Ridge, showing the North Call and the old route which had been made famous by the struggles of those great climbers of the 1920s and 1930s. Children, now many people uh, struggled and many people uh, tried for that. Uh, reaching the summit, reaching the top. When in 1920s and 1930s and all. Do you know when did they reach? They reached the summit, the top. On 29th May. And 1953 children. Okay. Of whom? Tenzing Norge and Edmund Hillary. After 10 minutes I realized that I was becoming rather clumsy fingered. And snow, slow moving. So I quickly replaced my oxygen set. See where they are. 8,848 meter above altitude. Isn't it? So their almost oxygen is left. And he felt very bad that he could not move at all uh, with the less oxygen. Meanwhile, Tenzing had made a little hole in the snow. And it, in B. He placed various small articles of food, a bar of chocolate, a packet of biscuits and a handful of lollies. Small offerings indeed, but at least a token of gift to gods that all devout Buddhists believe have their home on this lofty summit. So what did they do? They offered their offer tree there, thinking that they are giving to the Lord. While we were together on the south call two days before, Colonel Hunt had given me a small uh, a crucifix of which he had asked me to take to the top. I too made a hole in the snow and placed the crucifix behind beside Tenzing's gift. So John Hunt gave him crucifix to keep their uh, cross like so that was also kept. After 15 minutes I moved down off the summit on to our steps wasting no time 
we crumpled along our tracks spurred by the urgency of diminishing oxygen we scrambled cautiously over the rock traverses moved one at a time over shaky snow sections and finally crumpled up our steps and back on to the south peak we were now very tired but moved on to the two reserve cylinders on the ridge as we were only a short distance from camp that had a few liters of oxygen left in our own bottles we carried the extra cylinders down and reached our tent on its crazy platform at 2 pm and when did they start morning 6 4 they got up isn't it 6:30 they started from that particular camp 4 am they got up yes and they after their refreshment they started at 6:30 isn't that 6:30 isn't it now it is 2 pm to reach the place with the last look at the a camp that had served us so well we turned downwards and dragging feet and set ourselves to the task of safely descending the ridge to the south pole the time passed as in a dream two figures came towards us and met us a couple of hundred feet above the camp they were george lowe and wilfred noise laden with a hot soup and emergency oxygen just short of the tent my oxygen ran out we had had enough to do the job but by no means too much we crawled into the tent and uh, with a sigh of delight uh, collapsed into our sleeping bags while the tents flapped and shook under the perpetual south call gale so finally both of them not he edmund hillary and uh, uh, norgay reached the peak with all their might and soul yes John Hand who led the exp- expedition states that it was an unforgettable day they had climbed up to the top there were shouts of joy handshakes and hugs for these two heroes their happiness and pride showed how these men had shared in the achievement that was brilliantly concluded by Tenzing and Hilary the adventure was over the story of ascent of uh, ascent is going up everest is one comradeship and teamwork formed through dangers and difficulties met and overcome together perhaps after the climbing of this great mountain others will find their own everests for there are still many opportunities for adventure some are close at hand others are far away in distant lands not all adventures are exciting nor is adventure to be found only upon a mountain there are everests to be climbed in our everyday life a given the selflessness and resolve which enabled men to climb everest there is no height no depth that the spirit of man guided by your higher spirit cannot attain i don't know what is your adventure today children it is a short term adventure is there long term adventure is there but the think what you have the thought what you have if you think you can do better in shop i wish you all the very best hope you would have enjoyed reaching the mountain top reaching the mountain top experience every day you have to have while be completing your task every day that is mountain reach top experience i wish you all the very best may god bless you children stay blessed
you want to try it, Mo and Topka and I might be able to climb past you. I can go over this way. Yeah, give yourself like, like lay your sender down about one more foot step left. So we can climb right past you, you'll get the shot you want. Uh...